Is it possible to be ambitious and yet authentic? Or can we be authentic and yet still use the practical business tools of setting goals and having targets to shoot for? So I wanna thank the reader who asked this question. You know who you are. I didn't ask if I could uh, share her question, so I'm just keeping her anonymous. But I think this is a question that probably a lot of us wonder, especially as we start going down the path of, yes, I wanna do business in a way that doesn't compromise my, my values. I wanna do business in a way that is clean for my conscience, that I feel really proud of, not just, ooh, the numbers are great or not great, whatever, but it's like I, my soul and my heart and soul is fully aligned with what I'm doing in my business and how I'm doing marketing. And so how do we do this? How do we align between authentic and ambitious? Let's talk about this. So the person's question was, okay, you know, I want to do, let's say I want to do twice the number of videos that I did last year. Is that, is that, is that, is that ambition, not authentic? Let's say I want to sell uh, this many more products than I did last quarter. Having that number goal, does that make me or does that bring me into the, the territory of manipulation and hype and all that stuff? Okay. So here is how I think about goals. I do use goals. I do set goals to say, okay, I would love to sell X number of classes. I would sell, I would love to have X number of students enroll in my classes for the next one, let's say. I, but the key is that I set goals and then I remain curious and playful about my goals. Because the way goals are usually related to is hustle. It's about kind of no matter what, by any means necessary, we've got to achieve the goal. And whenever someone says by any means necessary, okay, the danger is essentially violence. If you think about it, any social movement, if it's by any means necessary, bam, I used to be part of those movements in college, okay? By any means necessary, we're gonna get this done. Well, by any means necessary means violence or unethical behavior because it's any means necessary because it's so important for us to get to that point that we don't care what we sacrifice to get there. That's what by any means necessary means. And that's, what, uh, that's how a lot of entrepreneurs think that they have to do it to be able to reach you know, success. And so they sacrifice their health. They sacrifice their self-care. They sacrifice the relationships they have with their precious family members. They sacrifice the relationship they have with their own soul. This is what it means to sell your soul. By any means necessary, I'm going to achieve success. Really? Oh, okay. Well, now that you've gotten there, where's your soul? Oh, I, I killed it long ago. How's your conscience doing? Oh, I, I don't sleep at night, but I have lots of money. I have lots of power, but conscience, forget my conscience. I don't care about my conscience. You know, I'm, I'm cynical now. I'm jaded, right? And this is such a terrible way at the end of their life, or maybe even before, they will have enormous regrets because they realized they missed the point of life. What's the point of life? Is it to reach seven and eight figure business? So a lot of, a lot of people think, oh, let me, let me, let me just get George, let me just get to the seven and eight figure or even six figure business first. And then, and then I'll, I'm, I, I know I trust myself to then become authentic and, and ethical about it. Oh, really? Okay. Well, good, good luck because I, I was there too. And I, I got to the six figures and I was like, this sucks. This is terrible. I had a breakdown and because I was divorced from my soul and I said, I can't do this anymore. And so I went to zero figure business and then I built it back up now. Thankfully it's, it's going good, but I built it back up, not compromising my values or doing as best as I can not to anyway. Nobody's perfect. Right. But that's, I prioritize my soul and my conscience and my authenticity more than I prioritize the numbers now. So that's the, so how do we, how do we align them? First thing, because a curiosity about goals rather than 
<laughs> rather than most people do the opposite. Oh, I care about the numbers so much, but I'm really curious if I could be authentic here. I don't know, but no, no. Prioritize by any means necessary your authenticity, right? Not by, I'm joking by any means necessary, but prioritize your authenticity and your soul and your spirituality and your values. That should come number one, okay? Because that's the point of life, isn't it? Isn't that the point of life? You get to the end of life, you get to the afterlife, you realize, yes, I, I did it. I, I prioritized the right things, right? Love and wisdom. That, those are the things to prioritize. And then with regards to numbers, oh, I'd like to sell 100 spots in my next uh, monthly course. Wow, I'm so curious if I could do it. And I'm, I'm wondering, that's, that's a, I'm playful about it. I get playful about it. And so if I get playful and curious, it still gives me ideas. Oh, if I want to sell 100, oh, what might that mean then for my marketing? What, what could I try? What could I experiment with? It becomes a playful thing. Now, the second point is that even the setting of the goals, I recommend, I do, the way I do it is I ground it in the reality of my trajectory thus far based on whatever activity I'm setting a goal for. So if, for example, I am accustomed to selling, you know, if, I, if, 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 if my enrollment numbers for my monthly courses are around, you know, let's say 60 is, is, is normal. Uh, 60 is on average, sell about 60 spots in my courses. Great. Well, then I'm not going to, if I set my next monthly goal to be a hundred and I usually sell 60, that is a dramatic increase that will probably stress me out. And that will make me compromise my values. You see what I mean? Or, or compromise my health. Okay. So that's the mistake that a lot of entrepreneurs make, especially when they start following marketers and, and business experts that are all about success and hype. And they, they set goals that are fantasy goals. And you might recognize some of that within yourself. Oh, I'm not, I'm not making any money right now, but I'm going to make six figures next year. Oh, really? Is that even, where is that even grounded in reality? Oh, it's not grounded, but someone said I could do it. Oh, really? Well, have you looked at that someone's trajectory? They already make six figures. That's why they say make six figures. It's, for them, it's not a big deal. But for you, you're starting at zero or you're starting at making $10,000 a, a year and now you're going to make 100000 Do you realize how ungrounded you are from reality? Yes, you could, miracles do happen but they usually happen in the realm of health or they may happen in the realm of relationships. I rarely or almost never see them happen. And I've been around businesses and visionaries for 10 years now. Miracles happen in health. They happen in relationships. They happen for your spiritual growth. They happen with family relationships. They happen with some of the strangest occurrences in life, but they almost never happen in business in terms of numbers, in terms of these kinds of, oh, I make 10000 or I make $0 right now, and I suddenly made six figures the next year, unless those things happen when people greatly compromise their values and their health. If you want to compromise your values and your health, you might be able to make six figures next year because, as a joke, you can go sell your body. Okay, make six figures next year, right? You, sell your, you can either sell your body or your soul, and you'll make six figures next year, Okay. It's not that hard, honestly, it's not. But you would have to sell something that is the point of life, is to keep your body and to keep your soul, right? So um, I'm, being, I'm making a joke, but it's, it's true. You know, that's what I did. I sold my soul in the beginning, first couple of years, and I made six figures, not so hard. So curiosity about the goals, groundedness in reality, if you're making... If, I, if, I'm, if I'm regularly selling 60 spots in my courses, monthly courses, then maybe next month I'll say, hey, I'm really curious if I could sell 65. Yeah, it's very realistic and I could do it. And, and here's where a lot of people go, George, I'm so afraid that if I set a realistic goal that I won't be able to achieve more than that because my law of attractions tells me that I should set a really high goal and then maybe I'll get somewhere close to that so people it's so ironic that people are afraid of setting low goals maybe you are too i'm afraid if i set a low goal then i'll only reach low results in my life here's here let me tell you a story about 
Okay, I, I was selling uh, my Draw for Productivity course earlier this year. It's a course that I love to teach. I just absolutely love teaching it, but it's not something that everybody loves to take, the, the course. So it's my passion project. And so I got curious. I'm like, well, I, you know, and, and this is a story of being uh, in fantasy. So I had a fantasy, like, oh my God, I, 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 lo I so love this course that I, I got ungrounded from reality. I said, I'm gonna sell 50 spots in this course because I was able to sell you know, 50, 60 spots in other courses, but I'm gonna sell 50 spots in this passion project course. Okay. And then after the first week of sales, only 25 people had bought. And I was dismayed. I'm like, oh my God, I don't think I can even make 50 sales. I'm so ungrounded from reality. So, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. After the first few days, I'm sorry. After the first few days, of, there was only like five sales after the first like day or two. No, I'm sorry. After the first day, 24 hours, there were only five sales. And I could tell, I thought I could tell by, by this point, like after the first day, if it sells a certain number, it's a pretty good sign that it's going to, you know, I kind of have a sense of it. Back then, I wasn't tracking these numbers yet. Now I'm tracking the numbers after first day, after first week. Now I'm, I'm going to get clear about that over time. But I didn't know. I thought, okay, after first day, five sales. Oh, my God. I'm... So then, guess what? I set a really low bar. I said, I am going to be happy with myself. I'm going to be happy if I sell just 25 spots in the course. I was going to sell 50, but I'm now going to just set a goal for 25. And of course, a law of attraction people would be like, oh my God, you law of attraction yourself into 25. Let me tell you what happened. I said, say, I'm going to be happy if I sell 25 courses. Great. So that let the pressure off. Now I can still be playful about how I market the course and, and everything. I'm still going to market the course you know, with, my, with my joy, my passion, my playfulness, expecting to sell 25. By the time the course started, I sold 70, 70. Hey, this is 20 more than my original and 10 more than my usual number. I so, how is that the law of attraction? I just tell you, I, I, I just, I say this again. The law of attraction is BS. I could just pretty much say the law of attraction, the most, most of the way it's typically taught, it is BS in business. BS, law of attraction is BS in business. You can quote me on that, but you can also quote me on this. The law of attraction works in relationships attracting the partner uh, that you want, especially in terms of the uh, law of attraction works in terms of the internal personality characteristics and kind of that kind of stuff. It may also work in terms of the outer parts, but I would, I would say the inner parts are more important. The law of attraction also works in terms of business partners, attracting clients. It's about attracting relationships. I think that works really well. A law of attraction, I think also can work well with health because again, it's about your own internal state. But when it comes to numbers, the law of attraction doesn't work so well with numbers. That's what I found. It's BS when it comes to numbers. So I, this is not the first time I've set a low goal and then completely blasted past. I set original goal and then, and then I'm like, okay, maybe I should set a lower goal and then I blasted past the original goal. I was really thinking about the low of like 25. I okay, get 20. So how do you explain that law of attraction people? How do you explain that? So so, so basically, curiosity and playfulness about the goal, I think, and then groundedness with your trajectory. And now you might say, George, what if I don't have a trajectory yet? I'm just starting. I am, George, starting from $0 a month or $1,000 a month. What is reality? Should I just only set $1,100? If I'm making $1,000 this month, should I set $1,100 the next month? Yes. Okay. Yes. Set grounded goals so that you don't stress yourself out and discourage and disappoint yourself the next month. Oh, I, I made a thousand this month. I'm gonna make $2,000 next month. Oh, really? If you made, especially if you made a thousand dollars in the past three months, how the hell are you gonna make $2,000 in the next month? Unless your strategies are dramatically different. If you're following dramatically different strategies or you are, you are going to be working way harder than you did the past three months, how the hell otherwise are you gonna make $2,000 in the next month? month if you made a thousand in the past three months it doesn't make sense you're ungrounded from reality and reality is going to hit you and disappoint you and discourage you and and then you're going to quit see that's what that's what happens with most visionaries and heart-based providers heart-based entrepreneurs okay so 
grounded goals because if you if you get grounded goals and you get curious about it, you may well black, you may well make three thousand the next month, even though you made a thousand the past three months. That's what happens when you get playful, curious, and still be grounded in your goals. Now there are two types of goals, and I'll, I'll end the video by just saying a few more things about this. There are two types of goals: results goals and process goals. Many people focus on the results goals, and I think that that is a mistake if you don't focus even more on the process goals. The results goals are, I'm gonna make $3,000 next month. Okay, that's a results goal, okay? The process goals are, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. I'm gonna take these steps. I'm gonna show up every day at this time of day from this time to this time and work on these things, the plan, okay? I call that the process goal because it's the goal for the, what is the process you're going to, you're gonna, what is the process that you're going to, to work in order to achieve your results? The process itself is a goal because you're like, I have a goal of doing this process. That's my goal. That's my main focus every day is to work the process, is to work the plan, okay? That should be your focus every day, not law of attraction, $3,000 the next month. Like I said, that's where law of attraction fails most of us is there's too much law of attraction about the results goal and not enough law of attraction about the process goals. What I do, law of attraction, I do law of attraction all day long, but I don't think about the numbers. I think about the process. I say, I'm now going to write my blog post with joy. I see myself writing my blog post with joy. Now I'm, gonna, I'm going to draft my sales page for my upcoming course. I see myself drafting the, the sales page with joy and with grace. That's what I do all day long. And that's why I not only reach my results goals, but I blow past them. I surprise myself every month, to be honest with you. I usually sell more than 60, but I just say 60, 60, 60, okay. And I usually sell more than, I sell, sometimes I sell 100 or 150 spots in a course. You, you've, you've seen it too if you've been part of my courses. So um, not everyone joins the live courses, like half of the people join. So you could see if 80 people joined my live course, there were probably 120 to 160 sales. So, but I say 60. Ah, and I, bl I blow away past that, right? So um, not always. Sometimes, you know, ma the mastery course sold, I think, 50-something. But I'm like, ah, you know, it's a, it's a passion project. Maybe I'll sell 30, and then I sold 50. So, um, so um, results versus process goals. Focus more on the process. Yes, have a results goal. Play with it. But every day, focus on the process goals. And finally, last thing is when it comes to the result, when it comes to the process goal, right? It's about time management and self-management. That's much, you need to focus on that much more than you focus on the results. You need to focus on your time and, and energy management. That is really where I see most of you are greatly, greatly uh, lacking. That you can be great at it, but you just don't focus enough on it. You don't focus enough on your time and energy management. Time management, meaning I'm gonna show up between two to three and write my blog post. I'm gonna show up between you know, 11 and 12 and, and draft my sales page for my course. No matter what, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, and energy management is, is imagining yourself enjoying it. Instead of, oh, I'm so afraid. Well, what if I fail? What if, what if I don't have ideas? No, then, then you are law of attractioning yourself out of doing the process goal, which is where most of us fail. But if we showed up, you're a genius. So if you only showed up with joy and with, and with ease, you would do the thing and you would learn and you would get better over time and you would activate your genius and your results goals would you'll blow past them. Okay. So with regards to process goals, it's about time management and energy management. And with the results, with, with, with regard to the results goals, it's about surrender. It's about playfulness and surrender. Oh, I, I'm curious if I could, if I could sell 60 spots in my next course, well, I'm, I'm really curious about that. We'll see. We'll see after the first, uh, the first day. Oh, well, no, maybe it's going to be lower. Maybe I'll sell 30. I'm really surrendering myself to, to the results, but I'm going to stay focused on my process goals every day with my energy management. I hope this is helpful. And uh, so, yes, the answer is yes. You can be authentic and ambitious if you come to it understanding the difference between results goals and process goals and relating to the results with playfulness, surrender, never letting it uh, go against your values. 
and then process goals, focus on those. To say, oh, I want to get those results. This is probably the process I need to take. So am I showing up every day for the process and, and, and bringing joyful productivity to that? Okay, so I hope this is helpful. I'm gonna, sorry about that. I'm gonna take a look at the, uh, to see if there are any comments. And I do welcome you to add comments and questions below the video. How was this, was this helpful? Do you want me to go into anything additional um, that might be helpful to you? And um, okay, great. Well, I don't see any comments here. So I'm gonna set a very low bar for zero comments for, the, for this video and play with that idea. And hey, maybe, they're, they'll, maybe I'll blow past that or I'll, I'll set a low bar for three comments on this video and then maybe we'll blow past that, we'll see. Um, so uh, thanks to Shweta and Kim, Dorota, Natalie and Jason for joining me um, for this live video. And until the next video, I wish you authentic ambition. All right, be well.